Hello, everyone. I'm Jean-Claude Beyond Mystic, broadcasting from my backup channel this evening. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Raw Naked Truth with Maryam Henin. Maryam, welcome to the show. Hello, JC. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on my show. <laughs> As you know, some weird things happen here uh, this week, so it's uh, it's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> no uh, shortage of odd things happening. Yeah, it's the it's the Twilight Zone. We should play a clip of that. You know. Do, 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 do. Right. <laughs> What is that? Are you wearing a beret? Are you doing the French? This is a beret. Or? This is, I guess it's a beret. I got it maybe 10 years ago and I have paid a good, good amount of money for this back when I was in the mainstream. Uh, I think I was working for, for Catwoman at the time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was the assistant to the director Pitoff. He was French. So I got the job during the reshoots of Catwoman on the Warner brothers lot. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was a fun job. Well, hello, everyone here uh, joining us on this live YouTube broadcast this evening on my backup show. And we are, of course, also uh, simulcasting this on Mariam's channel. Um, let's bring that up here. Hopefully, that's working. So if I click here, let's go see. Uh, simulcasting with. Yes, it is. Awesome. Okay, so that works. So, isn't it fun how, you know, they try to bring you down and you end up doing double the impact, <laughs> triple the That's impact. Great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I just got off of this um, Jenny Moonstone, uh, my friend who has a show here uh, recurring with me. Uh, we have two series, actually. Uh, one is Decoding Reality and the other one is um, Tarot Readings. Anyway, she just gave me a reading tonight. I wanted to get her input in terms of what energies were behind um, all of these shenanigans this week. Um, Quite a fascinating reading. Let me tell you that. So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to share that with you guys. I have to ask uh, Jenny, and we were rushing to finish so that we can jump onto this live stream here. So um, I might share parts of that with you guys uh, later on uh, this week. Very fascinating stuff. So, uh, Mariam, oui. what, are we, what are we talking about tonight? Are we doing the cat thing again? Or <laughs> the meow, meow. Well, yeah, I, I would like to... <laughs> I wish I, I had the, a similar um, something to squeeze. I, I, I've done a lot of work. Like I spent an hour today interviewing Christina Caramo again, who was one of the witnesses in Michigan. And um, then I briefly spoke to Matthew Pirano in Michigan also, who is the one who filed the lawsuit to get the forensic audit on Antrim. And there was a protective order placed by the judge by, I believe, an AG and Jocelyn Benson to keep the, um, the results um, under wraps, which is concerned, you know, red, raises a red flag. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just finished a series on Michigan. But I wonder, given the news out of Texas Supreme Court, um, someone just said, you know, that we basically just raped the Constitution. Um, so if that is like game over or what's, um, I think there is still an opportunity do you know? Can we talk about it if it's actual um, news? Well, I, I uh, have no doubt that between you as a seasoned investigative journalist and myself here with a political background, we can do our very best here to actually educate the public on what is going on. And of course, we are going to cite our sources um, yes. in the news media. So... Um, as far as I understand the rules, and I want to comply with the rules, the new rules in terms of uh, covering this election, uh, it is my understanding that if we do so in a manner in which we are educating the public, that we are perfectly within uh, the community guidelines. And so, yes, let's get into that. Now, okay. do you have um, do you have some links you want to share? And again. Uh, 
folks, so I'll apologize here to my bad. I was rushing with another, um, <laughs> as you know, I was on a session just before this one. So I don't have my links ready in front of me for this. I'm episode. sorry. I don't either. Okay. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take it easy. Sit back here. We're going to be. And uh, so folks in the, uh, in the YouTube chat here, I am currently rebuilding uh, the list of moderators. And so uh, as I see your names pop up here, I'm going to a different channel or a different uh, window here to try to add you back to moderators. So if you want to help us out this evening, the one of you who already have uh, wrenches, uh, please do uh, share some of the URLs uh, to the news uh, items that we're talking about here, and it'll just help Mariam and I here. Uh, yeah, I, I have links. I mean, I, I okay. uh, was going to read the Supreme Court, um, an article in the Epoch Times, and then I came across a, and I can share that, a tweet. Well, it's basically a press release from the Texan GOP, and it mentions succession succession and then i remembered that that uh was was referred was suggested in the transition integrity project project although it's listed under a clear trump win which arguably oops um yeah which is a scenario but but um okay i'll share that tweet okay uh, and I okay. put the Epoch Times in the private chat. If you want to pull that up, uh, we sure. can read it because sure. it is basically bre breaking news. Right. And so I'd like I'll have you uh, wait, sure get out of this little. I'd like to also here. say it's a, it's so interesting to speak to people um, from all all walks of life, all states that you haven't spoken to before, and I'm referring to Christina, and have these same conclusions of the left versus the right. And they are, for lack of a better way to put it, they, they are, um, um, what am I saying? There are generalizations between left and right, but it's interesting to come to the same conclusions of like, this is what the left is doing. This is what the right is doing. And this is a black woman who's been called a racist. And I always find it interesting when I come across someone who's African-American who likes orange man um, to speak to them and pick their, their brains. And you would think if someone is African-American, be like, but why? Uh, Trump is racist and really care about what they have to say. So, you know, no matter what, people who have been on the right that are not hating orange men um, to be called names, to be subjective to ad hominem attacks. It's just interesting that it's, it's, it's happened, you know, and you don't know the person and they're on the same page as you. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, that's so, a good point. so the U S Supreme court on Friday rejected Texas's bid to challenge the 2020 election results in four battleground States in an order. The justices denied Texas's requests to sue Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin opining that the Lone Star state, AKA Texas lacked legal standing or capability to sue under the constitution because it has not shown a valid interest to intervene in how other states handle their elections. Texas has not demonstrated a judiciously, judiciously cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections. The order read all other pending motions are dismissed as moot. Justice Samuel Alito issued a separate statement to say he would have granted taxes, Texas's request to sue, but not the preliminary injunction, as he believes the Supreme Court is obligated to take up any case that falls within its original jurisdiction, meaning the court has the power to hear a case for the first time as opposed to reviewing a lower court's decision. Justice Clarence Thomas joined Alito in this statement, in his statement, in quote, in my view, we do not have discretion to deny the filing of a bill of complaint in a case that falls within our original jurisdiction. I would therefore grant the motion to file the bill of complaint, but would not grant another relief. And I express no view on any other issue. And quote, Alito wrote in this, in his statement, he did not address the questions in the case. So should I continue? 
Sure, let's put it on the record. Why yeah. not? We're so Texas, the public. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who was on Stephen Crowder, uh, by the way, he gave an in excellent interview, and President Donald's Donald Trump's campaign did not immediately respond to the Epoch Times' request for comment. The state of Texas had asked the Supreme Court on December 7th for permission to sue the four battleground states in an attempt to protect the integrity of the 2020 election. The Lone Star State has accused the four states of changing election rules in violation of the U.S. Constitution's Electoral Clause, unequal treatment of voters, and causing voting irregularities by relaxing ballot integrity protections under state law, opening up potential for voting fraud. Texas was hoping to obtain a declaration from the Supreme Court that the four states conducted the 2020 election in a violation of the U.S. Constitution. It had also asked the court to prohibit the count of the Electoral College's votes cast by the four states. For the defendant states that have already appointed the electors, the, the suit asks the justices to order state legislators to appoint new electors according to the U.S. Constitution. Several attorneys general, attorney generals from the def defendant states have responded to the order. Pennsylvania Attorney General George Josh Shapiro said, quote, the U.S. Supreme Court saw through his, this seditious abuse of the judicial process and its swift denial should make anyone contemplating further attacks on our election think twice. Quote, while these stunts are legally insignificant, their cost to our country in misleading the public about a free and fair election and, and in tearing, tearing at our constitution is high and we will not tolerate them from our sister states or anyone else, close quote, Shapiro added. Michigan attorney General Dana Nessel also issued a statement saying that the ruling, quote, is an important reminder that we are a nation of laws and though some may bend to the desire of a single individual, the courts will not. Okay. If you can scroll, scroll down. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just so you know, folks, I'm looking at my phone here. I'm texting my buddy uh, Joe, um, Jason Bohr at Realist News. Um, I know he has guests over this evening, and I was trying to ask him if he wanted to come on the show with Mariam and I to discuss this breaking news. So we're just going back and forth here. So don't mind me, Mariam. <laughs> While you no, continue reading here, I'll do no, that. No, I don't. Okay. Trump and his allies have pinned great expectations on the Texas lawsuit with the president characterizing the case as the big one. He had asked the Supreme Court to allow him to join the case as an intervening party. The president has not yet issued a public statement on the Supreme Court order. Hours before the order, Trump wrote in a Twitter post, quote, if the Supreme Court shows great wisdom with a capital and courage with a capital, the American people will win perhaps the most important case in history and our electoral process will be respected again, end quote. After the lawsuit was filed, state attorneys general, attorneys general around the country began to express their position on the case. 19 Republican state attorneys general backed Texas in the lawsuit, which I think is in, in amicus, uh, which means friendly um, support. The states they represent are Missouri, Alabama, Arkansas, Arkansas Florida, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, West Virginia, Arizona, and Alaska. Six of the states filed a motion to join the case as intervening parties, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Utah. Meanwhile, 20 Democratic state attorneys general backed the defendants, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nevada, New Jersey, New, New Mexico, New York, North Carolina, Oregon, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont, Virginia, and Washington. None have filed motions to intervene. The Republican Attorneys General of Idaho and w Wyoming declined to participate in the lawsuit. Republican Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost filed a brief on behalf 
of neither party, arguing in favor of the court resolving the central question raised by Texas not opposing the relief sought by the lone state, star state. This story is developing. So, um, yeah, I wanted to. Then, um, yeah, I shared in a, a Twitter, if you want to pull that up on the... Okay, do you have that in the... Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see here. Copy. From here? Yeah, that's just you can click on the Texas GOP. Um, below is Chairman Allen West's statement in regards to the decision by the Supreme Court to dismiss Texas's loss constitu constitutionally legitimate and critical lawsuit, and then just highlighted perhaps a law abiding states, perhaps law abiding states should bond together and form a union of states um, that will abide by the constitution. And then if you go into the next slide, it's just from the transition integrity project. I just pulled basically game, game three, a clear Trump win, which is talking about the gameplay ending the con basically you could argue this is a constitutional crisis um, with threats of su succession, which we're, we're seeing and uh, the potential for either a decline into authoritarianism uh, or a radically revamped set of democratic rules to ensure that ensure the popular will prevails. Abolishment, because we've talked about abolishing the Electoral College, right? right Making right. DC and Puerto Rico and other changes. Um, yeah, and then Chuck Colasto, who I've been following, who's, I believe, a constitutional attorney but i wanted to read um someone someone commented to one of my kind uh, of basically I, yeah go ahead i'm also going to try to pull up uh, like when lisa sent me thank you like on lisa the um, executive order here so let me bring that up on another screen while we do that um i've also just texted uh, joe here a couple of times so i'm not sure he can join us or not uh, but he was okay. really good today. He didn't see this news already, so I think I'm catching him by surprise. Uh, but he had tweeted something earlier uh, today, uh, which was quite striking. So I want his opinion on it, and also this idea of now maybe this opening up the door to the military tribunals, um, and that's a whole other ball of wax here. And there's again, in the last month or so, we've seen a lot of activity on that front and we've seen a lot of uh, youtubers rightly or wrongly um opining the fact that maybe this was going uh, to military tribunals and that was always the end game uh, to begin with so it appears now that um the road is leading towards that so i am going to bring up this executive order in a second here uh, lisa when i this is a 2018 executive order that litecoin lisa is referring to that sydney powell has referred to regarding um foreign interference but the, excuse me this one person wrote in in comment to this news excuse me united states supreme court certiorari Certiorari is most commonly associated with the writ that the Supreme Court of the U.S. issues to receive a lower court's judgment. A case cannot, as a matter of right, be appealed by the to the U.S. Supreme Court. I wonder if this gives any hope if a court grants the writ of certiorari, certiorari then the court will hear that case. Does that make sense to you? No. Okay. I, I don't understand that word you're struggling with. Uh, <laughs> where are you reading that? Can I? I I'm going to. I'm going to share it. Um, okay. Because maybe I'm saying it wrong, and maybe the audience. Uh, let's remember, we're two Canadians here. Uh, <laughs> French Canadian at that. <laughs> Greek and Egyptian Canadian at that. <laughs> point, point is, um, American politics is not my Our strong um, suit. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, No, we're educating ourselves and we're yeah, educating absolutely. the public on these um, breaking developments here. So, okay, here's the Supreme Court order with Thomas. Is that what you're giving me, Marianne? This one here? Uh, oh, no, uh, but you can, no, I thought I shared another. Uh, maybe it's a response. Someone responded and it shares the main. Can you go down to see? Yeah, it's go down. 
It's her this this woman, oh. President Elect Janie Block. Um, and then I think she commented again. I don't know. If you, well, does that make sense? Of, Can you yeah, translate? Yeah, I understand what you, I understand what okay. she's saying, and this is what I was. Um, um, talking about after the Jerome Corsi interview with Robert David Steele, where he was talking just about this fact that the Supreme Court does not necessarily, as a matter of procedure, hear new cases. Um, they need a determination of fact and a trial to have occurred at a lower court, and you can make an appeal to that decision based on many factors, such as the judge at the lower court not following judicial procedure in his rendering of his decision, et cetera, et cetera. Now, in the case of a constitutional challenge, I believe you can make a case at the Supreme Court. So this is what she's saying here, that even that, um, because I understood the motion or the challenge presented by Texas as exactly that, a constitutional challenge based on the equal, protect, uh, equal rights uh, protection plots. So, I'm not sure here why the Supreme Court is saying that they, you, the Texas doesn't have standing. It appears to me that their decision where they say they don't have standing because they've never showed interest before. Well, that's kind of like you saying, hey, I just got raped and I'd like to accuse this guy. And you're like, yeah, but you've never accused anybody of rape before. So you don't really have standing here on this matter, Mariam Henny. So it's, it's kind of weird to me. It, it, when you were reading that, it was kind of striking me as, wait, what? How, how does that? make any sense if it's the first time you are aggrieved by a certain circumstance in this case of um of the equal uh, rights protection um i don't understand why you wouldn't have standing although this is the political uh ball game being played and they'll use mm -hmm. anything, everything uh to play this game here to throw it out of their court so wow um okay the executive order. So Lisa, um, let me bring that back up here. Let's see if I have it here. Okay. Do we want to read all of this, Lisa, or do you have a specific page or paragraph you want us to focus on and what was the um, juxt of what you were trying to accomplish here? So let me bring this tweet well, up. From well, the, the, the gist from what I understand is because let's say Dominion um, One is based out of Canada or headquartered out of Canada, although they've lied and said that it's a U.S. company. And if you do indeed have, and Lisa, you know, correct me, um, and if you have the servers arguably offshore or pinging in the internet world, uh, then that is arguably foreign interference. Now, the issue with that is that uh, SISA and um, Dominion are denying that there is anything offshore. Right. And, and all we've heard so far are these rumors and, and you know, internet hearsay of things happening in Germany, people being shot and all of that. And none of that is validated or at least not validated any source here that we can show and, and still be in the guidelines of educating the public other than saying it's hearsay. And there seems to be evidence of that. We can't go further than that. Lisa, I just sent you the link to join the show. If you can join us, that'd be great. Uh, I'd love to get your perspective on this and uh, maybe more here tonight. So uh, also, sorry, Rudy and Jenna are going to be on Newsmax or they were on Newsmax starting at eight EST. Okay. So I don't know if you want to, if we can cut to that. Um, I'm curious. Yeah, let me try to there. find, let me try to find that. Let me see if I can find a, a link. Yeah. To okay. Um, Right, and Lisa saying, yeah, Venezuela, yes, Mariam, servers in Germany have been seized. Um, but has that been presented in any uh, factual determination of fact in a court of law right now? And I think unless that's done, this is why the Supreme Court can't listen to it because uh, the executive order 
I guess, doesn't apply yet until there's a determination of fact there. I, I'm not sure how that works. Would it be the FBI or the CIA who would have to um, officially file that and, and expose that fact? Have they already done that in the last two, three days? I don't know. I've been busy with other problems. <laughs> I haven't seen. <laughs> I love how you laugh, Matthew. I love you laugh. Um, so, guys, uh, in the chat with us here, have you seen any um, um, authority in terms of uh, or policing authority uh, confirm that they have seized these uh, servers in Germany? And I'm talking about American authorities. And if so, please do send me a link uh, so we can uh, bring it up here and um, see how it all ties in together. So I'm looking at, he's on, um, well, I guess if you go on Newsmax, it's uh, uh, I, he's, it's going to be on Stingfield. Uh, so I'm just looking to see if I could pull up Newsmax. Because I have three screens in case people are wondering what I'm looking at. But I'm not joking. I'm not joking around. Uh, can you Wait, do a search for some reason? It's um, live now. Presidential election fallout and analysis on Newsmax. That's what, okay. I can. I think this is the interview. Let's see here. Uh, ha, ha, ha. The chat has been disabled for this stream. Okay, so I'm just waiting for this commercial to be over and then I'll bring it up uh, for you guys. It could be what we're looking for here. One more commercial to go. I think it's Alex Jones on Tim Cat on Tim Pool. We're still live, right? We're, we haven't been killed or anything. As far as I know, no. We seem to be live. What do you ask? I don't know because I'm scared. I guess because uh, I did. A, I did, a, and I just saw a video not available, and I, I'm just. Oh. On your channel. Yeah, I was just doing a search, um, and I'm doing a search for Newsmax. I'm trying to pull it up. Okay. Okay. Yesterday, okay, it's live. I'm gonna see what's going on, but I'm gonna. But right now, I'm getting commercials, so that's what I haven't oh, brought okay. it up. But I'm running it live too. As soon as I see. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm on the right one, but we'll see. It says live now. Newsmax uh, presidential election follow a uh, fallout and analysis on Newsmax TV. So that's what I'm running now. Um, although yeah, this going back to say, I don't think we we. Uh, and Benny Johnson. I, I mean, what? What? Yeah, I, I guess. What's the What's the next steps? Oh, I was also listening to the Wisconsin election. Let um, me uh, try to cut to him here. I think we're back. I think this oh, is it. Great. Okay. This is Stinchfield. Yeah. So again, here we are citing fair use. We're educating the public and we're sharing uh, fellow news feed from Newsmax. Um, again, an attempt uh, is transformative work and education for the public. Would have asked questions like this one today before election day. Did Hunter Biden commit a crime? Have you spoken to your son of the president elect? <laughs> Proud of his son, right? That would have gotten the public's attention, though, right before the election. But they didn't want it to get the public's attention. Here's why: because 17 percent of the people who voted for Joe Biden revealed they would not have voted for him if they knew about all the evidence that suggests the Bidens were peddling Joe's influence in China, the Ukraine, and beyond, all in a brazen quest to line their pockets. That 17 percent would have been enough to swing the election in President Trump's favor. The reason? The one thing we all can agree on, all Americans, for liberal and conservative voters, we do not like crooked politicians. Only now, after Election Day, is the media covering the newest of revelations. A new development involving the Justice Department and President-elect Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, who revealed late today he has been told he is under investigation by the DOJ. Well, it's about time we talk about it because we now know that the DOJ investigation is looking into allegations of tax evasion, money laundering, and most likely much, much more. So it turns out the New York Post and we here on Stitchfield were correct more than a month ago when we informed you about the existence of Hunter Biden's laptop from hell and its contents linking Hunter and the Biden family 
to Chinese Communist Party billionaires, as well as Hunter. But because the election is over, the New York Times feels free to report that the Biden family is not disputing the authenticity of the files found on Hunter's computer. Now, I believe the Times knew there was no dispute over the legitimacy of those files before the election, but squashed it, and even worse, lied about it. This is their headline back in October. Quote, New York Post published Hunter Biden report amid newsroom doubts. My guess is there were no doubts. Think about this. Twitter locked the account of the New York Post for nearly a month. Yep. But its entire investigation was spot on. The New York Post upheld more journalistic standards in its coverage of Hunter than any other mainstream media outlet has for any story in decades. Nearly every major social media outlet followed Twitter's lead, suppressing and censoring the posts about Hunter Biden. All of it worked, too. Leading up to election night, where the media's flat-out undeniable bias against the president and, of course, love of Joe Biden shine bright for all the world to see. I can't help but be emotional at this moment. It felt like this weight had come off my chest. I call it unbridled exuberance. It's it's like Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you unbridled exuberance. <laughs> they all made me sick. Right. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. And here's, I, okay, I saw this news uh, earlier today or yesterday. I tweeted about it uh, in the midst of my own problems here. And I was looking at this. I'm like, fuck. Did all those YouTubers who got deleted for talking about this and those Twitter accounts who were suspended for talking about this in last October, have they been reinstated today? For wrongful termination? Because clearly they were talking about the facts. They were dead on. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this is so crazy. And in the meantime, since they got deleted, are they going to be reimbursed for all that money they lost? Those ad revenues they lost, right? The reputation and the, the momentum they lost, the damage to their business. Who Who's going to deal with this? This is how, like, right. of course. It's a clusterfuck. Like, yeah, it's so frustrating to watch. And still, I talk to people on the street here. No, 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 JC, don't worry. That, 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 that's dismissed. That, that, that's disbunked. No, it's not disbunked. It's fucking in the news today. They're confirming it now, of course, after the Safe Harbor Day. Now it's safe to talk about it. And now, why is it safe to talk about it? Because they have a guy that they never wanted to begin with. My opinion, my opinion, my opinion. And they yeah. want to put Harrison there. So now it's okay to chop his head off now that they think or right. we have the mainstream media a report that he's secured the position. Of course, I'm talking in code here, but you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wow. And and you think you can like I don't understand how people can watch the news and not see through this. Like it's so no, they're blatant. not taught to. It's blatantly not obvious. Really. I, I actually remember as I'm speaking now, um, years ago, while still in university, to have a class where you teach people how to look at the TV and remember there's someone behind the camera. Uh, you know, there, there's someone behind the camera and that um, the way things are clipped, like, oh, I'd like to share some clips with you that Aaron Burnett uh, of CNN and um, it's mind boggling. Let, let me, let me look for it. Also just Philip Klein was giving testimony today. He did an excellent job. He is with the Amistad project. He is an attorney. He did say that the constitution does not mandate December 8th or December 8th. Those are congressional statutes that the real date of importance, because we talked about this the other day is January 20th. Right. So ju just to keep that in mind, um, you know, I don't know how things shake down at this point, um, given, I mean, we were, because so many states joined and this really looked like an acknowledgement of uh, not abiding to the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. So um, one second, I'm just uh, Litecoin Lisa to the DJ booze, please. Litecoin Lisa to the DJ booze. 
<laughs> do you want to come on the show, like, do you have, do you, Lisa? Do you have time? I sent you the link uh, to your email, um, so check your spam. Unless you, um, uh, or maybe you can make it. That's okay too. Um, so yeah, again, read the EO. Okay, we'll get to that in a second here. So, um, Miriam, while you're looking for this link, I'll just I'll keep this guy uh, sure. talking here. Yeah, yeah, I shared it with you, but let's see what he's saying. Okay. The media now gloats on every other cable network. There's suppression. The plot, it worked. But here's my prediction. Their target will shift from President Trump to Joe Biden. The China connection will unravel. Joe Biden will be outed as the boss of the Biden cartel. And the media's socialist queen, Kamala Harris, will waltz her way in right to the White House. So if the Supreme Court is listening, you made a mistake tonight. If the state legislatures out there and the four swing states in question and others like Arizona, if you're listening, do what is right. Go with your conscience and ultimately save America. Well, coming up, anti-American activists have once again taken over a chunk of a liberal city in the western United States. Take a look at this. This is Portland. Bad guys. All right. Back to us here. And I'm going to let that play in the background so we're up live when they come back on the when jenna show. comes on right so i'll be able to see that here in my window He's passing oh. a law that yeah and i'm just gonna bring that down to a different window so that we can still do our work here and share some other content okay so you sent me a link here uh on twitter um second or yeah, third like when lisa makes a good point which we've said a couple of times and others have said why does kamala doesn't give up her Senate seat if she's so confident of her elect VP. Mm -hmm. Maybe just keep it just in case justice prevails. Um, right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so I have, uh, I'm looking here, Mariam, you sent me two different Twitter links. Yeah, you can pull up. You want to start with Populist, the Populist Press one? Is that what you want me to do? If you go back to your uh, private yeah. chat window, bring me... up whichever whichever one. Okay, let's start with uh, this one here. Yeah, because all I see is the link. I don't know what you're talking about. So let me. Okay, me sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that one we did. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so I'll start with this. Um, Populist Press. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me bring this one up for you, Miriam. We. Oui. Oh yeah. What is this? Sorry. Uh, oh, I haven't even looked at this. I just saw it. Okay. Uh, leaked. I I haven't heard a leaked Biden audio, but if we can break it to the, I'm sure it's pretty new. Um, you can probably click on that. Okay. So that that's a he that's a headline. Leaked Biden audio. This is a headline. Barely, barely able to speak admits Trump smoked them across the country. Okay, so this is published Friday, December 11th. And, okay, so I'm gonna try, I'm guessing this is what I have to play, okay. When the election takes place down in in, uh, um, uh, in uh, Georgia. But I also don't think we should get too far ahead of ourselves on dealing with police reform in that because they've already labeled us as being defund the police. Anything we put forward in terms of the organizational structure to change policing, which I promise you will occur. Promise you. Just think to yourself and give me advice to do that before January 5th, because that's how they beat the living hell out of us across the country. Okay, so what- When the election takes place down when I hear that, I don't yeah. hear they beat us in terms of votes. What I hear that is they kept, you know, beating the drums of this particular issue across the country and that they were bleeding votes on this. But this doesn't mean that, you know, he's admitting right. that Trump won the election across right. the country. Okay. So that headline is a little misleading. And we, yeah. just to, we just have to be fair here on what actually sure. Biden is talking about. Okay. Still very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting to say the least. It's um, clickbait, really. 
now, yeah, now yeah, yeah. that I look at it, but yeah. I didn't know that. No, and that's okay. Again, we are educating the public. We're educating ourselves, and we are looking at the evidence where it points us. And when it is clickbait, we are admitting it, and we are moving forward and continuing our search here for the truth. Um, okay, so now let me go back, Lisa, to your second to the bottom tweet here, and let me bring that up. Okay, this is the one you want me to bring up? Yeah, this was from yesterday, I believe. Uh, it's all bleeds into one day. Yeah, yesterday. And uh, you could play the... Okay. She's talking about the... Um, well, let her speak, I guess. Okay. She says it's fabricated. Where do those kinds of words come from? Well, the Rona is fabricated she was pushing for that mask mandate because so many of her friends were dying because unfortunately the woman that you just heard a moment ago and mitchell is not alone in saying that this is fabricated so where does this come from how could people still be saying this well it is because of the president himself who just last week retweeted a post with a picture of dr Reno and I. Now, this doctor took a selfie uh, this is in a makeshift covid unit in a parking garage so the president retweeted along with the picture, a message from a conservative blog that read, here's the fake Nevada parking garage hospital picture that our moron governor tweeted, proving it's all a scam. No patients, folded up beds, wrapped up equipment that's never been used. They spent millions on this scam and never seen a single patient in this fake hospital. Okay, so the president of the United States retweets this. That doctor who tweeted that picture after losing five patients in 32 hours came on this show and said this. We have since seen over 200 patients in a parking garage, a place I never thought I would take care of a human being. I was disgusted. And it's about time that all of our elected officials view COVID as a humanitarian crisis. So those are the facts. Those, those facts. are the facts. What's the facts, honey? That it's oh. a makeshift parking lot. It's a sh makeshift parking lot. Sorry. Okay, sorry. I had to crank up the volume for this yeah. video because it was really low. And when you speak, okay. I'm really sorry, high. Sorry. I had to readjust there. I, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, folks, if you guys are listening into uh, headphones, we might have broken your ears here. So, but next time, Mariam, I'll warn you. Okay, uh, yeah. Sorry, I I apologize. Up, it's, it's my fault. <laughs> okay. Uh, JC, turn off your CC in studio. Okay. Um, okay. I understand why you're saying that. So I will get to um, mucking around here with the settings on this new backup channel as well. Uh, thank you for that uh, advice, uh, like when Lisa. Okay. Um, Right. Okay. So now moving on to the next piece, is there anything else you want to well, comment? I, I didn't, I interrupted it. It wasn't finished. I thought it was. Oh, wait, let me see. Oh, you're right. Okay. So let's go back to that. I'll, so hold on to the end and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Because they trust the president. You remember the IT contractor for Dominion voting system? She was Rudy Giuliani's controversial witness in that Michigan hearing on voter fraud. She told the Washington Post she has no plans to quarantine, even though she was sitting inches away from Giuliani all day. He, of course, was tested positive for coronavirus. But, quote, I would take it seriously if it came from Trump, because Trump cares about American lives. But she added that if Trump-friendly networks like One American News or Newsmax told her to go get tested, she would. She trusts Trump. And as awful as that may be, he's violating that trust and putting lives at risk. Hold on. Okay, my hand back to you. Thank you. If you want to play the other one, um, it's shorter. It's just okay. it's just a continuation of that segment. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Or is no, it? If, you, if you go back, it's part of the thread. Oh, got you. Okay, sorry, sorry, it should be just underneath. Okay, so that, this one here? Yeah. Okay, so let me readjust the volume here. Taking, right, the death toll climbs to 300,000. He ignores that and, and tweets about Germany. 
Yeah, and when I asked sources where the president's head is on the pandemic, they say he's basically completely consumed by his election loss. And we saw that play out yesterday at the vaccine summit, where the president turned it instead into talking about their achievements with the vaccine development and instead into a venting session about what happened in these states. A lot similar to like what that tweet about Nevada that he tweeted earlier this week as well. And when he was asked by a reporter, you know, this vaccine news is amazing, but what is your message? to Americans right now that we are seeing record numbers of deaths, cases, hospitalizations. And the president said, well, their goal was the vaccine. He then talked about immunity being developed in the United States, even though that's not what we're hearing from medical experts. And then he also blamed the amount of cases in the United States on the number of testing that we're seeing. Something the president has been for months, claiming that we have more cases because there's more testing, even though you know, the medical experts have said that is not the case it's because the virus is surging across the country. And I think that's the concern among people is what's going to happen over these next few weeks while the president is in office, not taking this seriously or taking the same message uh, that other health officials have. And that comes as he is also denying the fact that the transition is happening, but you're seeing other officials like the HHS Secretary Alex Azar say that he has met with the Biden transition team. And Aaron, we should know that's the first cabinet official so far to confirm on the record that they've met with the transition team. Don. Okay, back to you, Maryam. So what do you think of, of what's your takeaway on that? They're shaming people. Yeah, and <laughs> my opinion of that is they're making it look like Trump doesn't care about anything else but himself. And of course, people are dying because of him. That's what that sounds like to me. Yeah, and shaming using Melissa as a scapegoat to parade, to shame her, like, how dare you, anyone who doesn't get tested, um, anyone who's, you know, not, not helping humanity, because as Joe Biden says, it's unpatriotic to not wear a mask. Right, exactly. So it, I'm just so done with, like, you know, I, I think I've said that, like, oh, I have a bad hair day. Thanks, Trump. It's all your fault. Everything's yeah, your fault. It's all his fault. And you know, the same thing is going to happen with all, with all of this. And again, in my opinion, if and when the light really comes through on this uh, world issue here at some point, um, are the people who have suffered censorship going to be reinstored for being right? Like just on this like my lap, um, Biden laptop issue? People got, you know, deleted for that, suspended for that, lost revenue for that. And yet here we are, the Bidens themselves are uh, acknowledging it. And the officials uh, in the States have also uh, signified that they are pursuing a uh, tax evasion or tax fraud uh, case uh, against um, Biden's son. So these are facts now, apparently. And it just frustrates me that the people talking about this uh, who genuinely were following the leads. And at that time, CNN was telling us, oh, we can't verify that. We, can, we can't talk about that. That's not verified. That's not verified. Yet everybody knew it was verified. So it, it's very frustrating. I don't know. Very frustrating. Um, yeah, very says, Sweet Mariam has, has to hold her words because she has so much truth to spill. Yeah, I know. And it's a, it's a hazardous job here <laughs> to spill the truth. Um, yeah, uh, R. Smith says, please stop CNN, playing CNN. I want to vomit. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, R. Smith, yes. it's. Uh, I, I have been watching, I thought of this yesterday, that I've been watching CNN and NBC Nightly News every day. Every day we're shattering um, uh, statistics, like shattering records, like new death records. But So I've been watching it since I was in Miami in the hotel room. Um, and it's bad for your health, yo. It's bad. It's bad for your health, but it's also comedic. And it's a, it's it's interesting to just see what the other the 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 mockingbird media is sharing to the people because this is this is forming their perceptions of reality. Yeah. And you know, after the fact, again, it's always after the fact. And the after the fact, nobody's paying attention anymore. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh. You know, it never happened. Um, there's such a way, and you talked about your know, journalism school and learning how there's always somebody behind the camera. Um, I found that out in the years of politics too, where I saw the event happen 
and then all the shenanigans and the mechanisms from the event to the actual six o'clock news. And once you know all those pieces that go in line from the event to the six o'clock news news bite, you have the ability to retro engineer it now. So when you hear a news clip, you kind of you just go backwards using that same uh, rule book. And right now, unfortunately, often it feels like it's exactly 180 degrees the opposite yeah. of what actually happened. Uh, and in this case, uh, the Biden laptop, um, again, a lot of us are vindicated here today. So crazy. Yeah. Uh, like when Lisa says, the hey, damage wanna... has been done. Yeah, it's been done. And again, uh, especially if those polls are correct, that 70%, 17% of the uh, Biden supporters would not have voted for him had they known about um, some of the um, right. illegal activities of the sun um, right there, that they, they just participated in uh, election influence of the media. They were complicit in that. Uh, I mean, again, that's my opinion, but when you look at the facts on the ground, they had a hand, of course, in playing that. It happened a couple of years ago here in Canada, too. We had this election, and um, the media was not reporting the fact that the Canadian government had done a deal with the um, oil refineries where they would let the oil refineries basically gouge Canadians um, on the gas prices um, to make up for the fact that the um, the oil prices had gone down and that these industries were suffering here in Canada. We never knew that until after the election. Then, okay, we could talk about that. But had, had the electors known this during the election, uh, we might have had a much different outcome and at the very least, we would have had much more interesting debates about issues that were really taking place as opposed to, you know, the um, kangaroo, kangaroo court or monkey court we were having at the time. Lisa says, yeah, if you want to play CNN, play the tapes of Project Veritas. Yeah, I saw those. I tweeted about that when it came out. And I'm like, had he not done, um, James O'Keefe, uh, such a great job before. <laughs> trapping these guys and listening into these uh, executive morning calls. Uh, I might not have believed the, the audio, but of course we've heard this all before. It's the same, 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 like extreme bias. And again, no other news agency is reporting this. And if I show this to my dad, my dad was, no, no, that's, that's, that's not possible. Well, listen, Zucker, Zucker, uh, he was a head of NBC and he was overseeing The Apprentice, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, to be hired as uh, head of, of CNN, um, I mean, it, it's conflict uh, of interest, and, and you have to consider he had arguably a personal vendetta or like, I mean, that's the thing that so many um, hate this man, orange man, and that others then hate him and they don't know why they hate him. Right. And it, it just, it, it, oh, I was watching Giuseppe, um, who's interviewed me, uh, I forget the name of his show, but with James Jim Fetzner, I think it was on his channel, he was doing a piece on the Rona, and they were showing a segment of conformity. Did I tell you this the other day? No. No. Yeah, I, um, I so, so there's a, a doctor's office, and there's there's people, I guess, that are all in on it, on this experiment, and this one, um, it was a young Asian woman, and um, every 10, five minutes, a bell rings and they all get up and she looks around and lo and behold, I would like to believe I wouldn't do this. Um, she starts standing up and then one by one they leave. Now, by the time everyone exits, let's say 10 people, now she's been conditioned to con to conform without knowing why the fuck she's doing it. So then a strange, another strange per a person comes and like, why are you standing up? And she's like... I don't know everyone else was. And then he joins in and then another person comes in. And here's an example of how you wear your face diaper, but you can't tell me what size the virus is. But yet alone, yet you still wear this and you pretend or you think that it's protecting you without knowing. So I would like to, to believe that I would not do something without thinking, well, why am I doing this? Why do I drink this coffee? Why, am, why do I buy from this? Like, ask yourself, where did this come from? Why am I doing it? Question your programs that you've adopted and delete them if they don't serve a purpose. Yeah, 
And I'm just trying to see here if I can bring up an image. Um, I also I here. also shared while you find that um, there's a, another lawyer that I've been following and communicated with and included him in my story, Ivan, and he uh, writes how that and he's been kind of detailing a path to victory and he says this the scotus is only one way so in that tweet which i didn't scrutinize because i just saw it um outlining other ways to to uh are you talking about let me see if i can bring this it up. says raiklin his name is ivan raiklin oh that's one we can look at that so okay. Uh, but we, I have, before we do that and before yeah. I get here, this other image I wanted to show you, of course, this is a manufacturer of masks stating clearly, as per the law requires, the uh, efficac uh, efficacy, efficacy? efficacy. Efficacy of uh, their particular masks that the population is mandated to wear. And on a box, it says, and will not provide any protections against COVID-19 or other viruses or contaminants. So, of course, this is one of the masks, but, uh, you know, there's no standard for masks right now, right? I could do this and it's a mask. And people have done, you know, the same thing with cotton, you know, pieces of cotton and two elastics. And Here, this is my mask. This is my mask. Right, What's mask. frustrating is when I go into a store and I do this and then I'm re trying to read something and then they get fogged up and then I want to take it down and then I can't see. Um, and then they're like, cover your nose, cover your nose. <laughs> Again, it, it, for me here too, the censorship is so wild because even reading the manufacturer who produces these boxes, legal obligation to provide the specs under material um, it says on there that it doesn't uh, protect against COVID, yet we're being forced to wear it in the context of COVID. Um, and that is blasphemy, apparently, to read the manufacturer specs from the box of the person who uh, provides medical equipment. So, <laughs> for what it's worth. All right, it would be great to actually walk around with that box if I could get that box and be like, um, can you read this out loud for me? Mm -hmm. After you just schooled me, and then they can read it and be like, "What do you oh. think?" Oh, well, well, uh, that can't be true. CNN says so. <laughs> well, like, uh, Lisa was saying earlier, "Well, stop asking for verification from mainstream news." I'm sorry, you. I'm not sure if you were saying that to me or somebody else in the chat. If you were saying that to me, of course, I'm not looking for uh, validation from mainstream news. What I was asking or alluding to earlier, as it pertains to the servers. Was there any official judiciary body or military body or a policing body, such as the FBI, the CIA, whatever, confirming that they had their hands on the servers and was this on their websites? Um, or had it been determined in a court of law through um, a determination of fact uh, process? That to me, uh, especially here being on YouTube, if I can at least point to that, we can stay a lot closer within the guidelines here of educating the public. If we cannot point to that, it becomes very difficult to talk about he said, she said. And I agree with you, a lot of in a lot of cases, um, those have merit. Um, I'm just trying to continue to have a show here and be able to to share the news where I can and be in, and do it in a responsible manner. Uh, I hope you guys understand that. Uh, I hope I, I, anyways, I'm thinking out loud here in English and it's late, but I hope you, I, Marianne, does that make sense? Oui, just, I understand. Okay. Yes, okay. I understand. Okay. So let's get back to this one here. You were sharing. I'll tell you if they don't. So I, I, uh, yeah, Litecoin, Lisa, if in regards to the servers, because it's been debunked and uh, I know that there's been other uh, reports that says it's true, but Okay, so I can read this out loud because I, I don't know what it is. Um, okay. Do you want me to bring up this? Is yes, please. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so Pascrell, I guess, is a representative. So Patterson, this is Patterson, New Jersey, Representative Bill Pascrell of uh, Democrat New Jersey today called on House leaders to sanction members and exclude from the 117th Congress any member uh, members elect who are supporting Donald Trump's efforts to invalidate the 2020 presidential election. Pascrell cites the text of Section Three of the 14th Amendment, which disqualifies from service any individuals who seek to attack American democracy as well as Congress's power to exclude members by majority vote as acknowledged by the U.S. Supreme Court in Powell versus McCormick. Quote, stated simply, men and women who would act to tear the U.S. government apart cannot serve as members of the Congress. These lawsuits seeking to obliterate public confidence in our democratic system by invalidating the clear results, clear, of the 2020 presidential election undoubtedly attack the text and spirit of the Constitution, which each member swears to support and defend. Representative Pascrell writes, House leaders, quote, consequently, I call on you to exercise the power of your offices to evaluate steps you can take to address these constitutional violations this Congress and, if possible, refuse to seat in the 117th Congress any member elect seeking to make Donald Trump an unelected dictator. So this, to me, is gaslighting and using the 14th Amendment, which is supposed to actually protect and to point out uh, arguably people who violated the um, integrity of the vote, right. right? How do you, how are you represent, how are you? Because to say we want every vote counted, to say that that is undemocratic is kind of, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't need votes. Uh, that's been debunked. <laughs> The media has already told you who's the president. We don't need to count votes. No, 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 no. Stop counting votes. We don't, we don't need them. Um, don't need, we don't need the uh, black boxes of these um, um, machines uh, where people are seen on video running the same st stack three times uh, when all the other um, Republicans were asked to leave the room. We, d we don't need to see those machines. No, 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 no. What you're seeing there on video, video, these are droids you're looking for. Don't, don't worry. Speaking of that, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Maria. Uh, I think yeah. I think we could probably cut this portion here. Uh, we're at the one hour mark, and we can jump okay. onto the Patreon here uh, stream and there get into. I think I think I'd like to get into more of the um, Aunt Maxine story. Um, there's a uh, quite a few. Uh, news articles, damning news articles today about some of the trials, uh, some negative, um, positive or some positive. I can uh, get into that too, because there's a lot of um, right. conflicting information. Yeah. And, so before uh, I do yeah. that, before I do that, let me see if I can find uh, my buddy Jason uh, posted something today earlier. And let me see if I can find that uh, and share it with you guys. Just as a, something to think about. Um, let me see here, Joe, Realist News, everybody, there you go. He retweeted, uh-uh-uh, damn, Joe, how much did you tweet today? Where did it go? Ah, here you go. Well, that's 13 hours ago. Okay, so let me bring this wow. on screen. Um, he retweeted this um, this guy here. Who had tweeted about this? Don't worry, baby. This song. So was that in anticipation of the um, Scotus decision today? And somebody somewhere in the background is telling us, "Don't worry, don't worry." Um, maybe alluding to the fact that this is going um, to military tribunals, and that's what it was going to in the first place. Maybe. Um, I just. You know, it's a point of reference at this point, and uh, <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep pulling at that thread. But I wanted to share that um, when I saw Joe posted that earlier today. I'm like, huh, yeah, yeah. And this is the thing, though, when you start looking at all these pieces, and if you give it enough time, um, it usually we usually have clarity, just like we do now mm. on the Biden um, uh, 
uh, son here being uh, investigated for tax fraud. And in that investigation, and this is not just the son, by the way, in that investigation, if mm -hmm. the report and the testimony of some of his mm -hmm. friends and business colleagues who are also indicted are correct, that there were portions of this money going to the big guy, uh, it's not just Hunter who's in trouble here. It's uh, the big guy himself. So we will continue following that thread and reporting to you guys. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here tonight on this backup channel. <laughs> Please do like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. I'm trying to rebuild those numbers. Let me see here if I can do a refresh and see where we're at. This was 293 earlier today. Hey, 362. Man, you guys rock. Thank you. <laughs> what, what, uh, what's a couple of days and I'll get to 1,000. <laughs> what's that, Mariam? Oh, how much are you at? 362. So, you know, okay. It's a start. Right. It's a start. <laughs> you got to, you know, you got to roll with the punches. And uh, I want to say thank you to everyone who's uh, subscribing here and who's helping um, share my new videos and my new platform on Twitter, on Facebook, and everywhere. I see your guys' efforts, and I really appreciate that. And I want to thank all the new uh, Patreon uh, supporters as well who came to uh, – uh, to defend me here and to um, basically um, cheer me on. And I've had so many beautiful messages from all of you and some crazy generous donations. Um, I'm going to make a separate video to thank all of you people uh, separately because that's just really amazing. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, uh, Mariam, for being here. And folks, please do um, subscribe to Mariam's channel. Is this the one? Yes, it's supposed to be the one. Let me back please, please, please do. Yeah. And I don't know if you can share my Patreon, but I also yep. um, need support. I do not get paid for the articles that I write, and they take time and research. So there you go. I just put your YouTube link there. And hmm. let me uh, get out of this here and uh, find your Patreon, and I'll put that on screen as well. And, you know, as I was looking at um, the um, – a response to the termination here in my appeal, uh, if they are, if it was just a bot that was looking at my links and determining that I was spamming, uh, because I do provide quite a bit of outgoing links in my descriptions, but these outgoing links are there to support the people who come on my show. It's not like I'm being dis misleading where I'm saying, hey, we're going to talk about red violins. I'm sending you to blue violin links. That would be considered misleading. Uh, but when I'm providing links to the people who come on my show, to their books, to their websites, to their own YouTube platform, I'm adding value uh, to the video and to the viewer by providing them with those links. And that is perfectly um, uh, allowable within the guidelines. But if a machine is just looking through it and not determining that the links actually match the content of the video, um, it could be where I'm getting in trouble. So we'll see. Um, well, that's sorry. You bring up a good point that they're 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 so um, they give these catch all very ambiguous, and they don't they don't really care. They're not like, hey, if you did this, and then you'd be like, okay, great. But it's like this blanketed your hate speech, and it's like what or impersonation, and you're like, who am I impersonating? Right, right. Uh, so, folks, here it is. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash Mariam Henin is her Patreon uh, link. I, and I'm going to I'm gonna share up. one more. I'm going to share one more link, please, sure. which is basically um, alt censored, which is where, um, in my case, m my videos were, were saved, 220 of them, because my current YouTube channel doesn't do justice to uh, to all of your work. Yeah, and there's um, news now that Dominion voting machines in Michigan changed votes from Trump to to uh, Biden. So that's breaking news. And I guess the lawyer that I was talking to probably spoke to the Gateway Pundit. So I don't know if you want to share that on the other. Um, yeah, let's do that yeah, on the second part of the show here too. And, and you and I can get into maybe more commentary there as well and uh, take off the gloves here. So let me just bring that link down uh, to your all censored here on the main chat so people can go and uh, follow you over there as well. 
all right i think i'm up to date let me just look at the uh i'm, I'm also here. gonna i'm also gonna just share my activist post um articles i've written about five of them on the on the uh, elections and uh if you can share that i wrote i think three or four parts to uh, in, in just in just reference to um uh, to Michigan. And when we go to the other, uh, I'll share a clip that I found from Matthew Perano, De Perano, sorry, Perno, uh, okay. who's, who, who confirms the Dominion machines. And this is Gateway Pundit. So he did speak to Gateway Pundit. Okay. And I'll, I'll probably call him tomorrow. Very good. Okay. So I have that link to your activist post here in the chat. It's also on the screen now for people to click on it and to um, go check out your work there. Now, uh, Diversity City. Thank you, JC, Mariam, uh, all you good people in the chat. Love you all. Love you too, Diversity City. Thank you for that. Thank you everyone for joining us. And um, yes, please do remember to like, share and subscribe. And please share this video with other people so they can find us, <laughs> both Mariam and I, because we're kind of both rebuilding <laughs> what was once lost. Uh, so thank you so much everyone for joining us I'm thank Jean you, and Beyond Mystic and thank you Mariam and we'll see yes. you soon thank you everyone on the Patreon site at patreon.com forward slash beyond mystic and there you're looking for the insider access pass thank you au revoir thank you au revoir